Thank you, Manfred. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. How many of you use my SQL? I hope everybody. How many of you have heard of my SQL sandbox? Okay. Do you have an idea what is it? It's a strange thing. If you are a DBA or a developer, you may have had the need of installing MySQL uh, aside the server that you have to make a test, to, to, to try a new version for any reasons. You may have needed to, to install something, a new software. So this thing will install a side copy of MySQL in less than 10 seconds, or a replication system in less than 15 seconds. And it will allow you to do very interesting things without suffering. Emma? Okay. How does it work? You need a Unix-like operating system. Sorry, I don't do Windows. Or actually, Windows doesn't do friendly systems. Uh, you need a MySQL binary tarball, means that you have to download the tarball or you can build it yourself. You need, of course, the MySQL sandbox. Perl and the bash shell should be already on your system. It's not an official MySQL product. It's something that I developed uh, for my own needs and I decided to give it away freely under the GPL. I will explain to you why you need it and how it works. Basically, it will uh, make a boring uh, job easy and quick. Actually, it's not boring at all because it, it will completely disappear from your list of tasks. So let me see, let me say why I'm taking the time to tell you all these things. Explaining this is like boxing. Explaining takes longer than delivering. So I will take my time to tell you what is the problem and uh, how we solve it, and then I'll show you how it works. How it works is you have to be very attentive because it will take only seconds. So this is the, the long part. The long part is uh, why do you need the sandbox? If you want to install a, a MySQL server on a box that already has a MySQL server, you have to take care of data directory port and so on. These are the things that you cannot uh, overlap with the ex existing server. If you put the data in the same directory, you will have data corruption. Or maybe in some cases it won't work at all. If you use the same port or the same socket, it will not start. and you won't realize on this unless you read the error log. So, how does it work the hard way? You read the manual, you follow the instruction, and you can do it manually. It will take a while, not long. It will take you less than 15 minutes. But, and if you have to do this on, only once in your lifetime, it's fine. If you have to do it every day, you make mistakes, for sure. Trust me, I did it, made a lot of mistakes. So why a tarball? Why we are not using 
RPM, that PK, you mentioned anything. You can do mostly the same thing with uh, all these packages, with specialized tools and with, with deep knowledge of uh, your environment, your operating system, and how the package was made. Uh, it would work only on the specific place where you learn the details for. But if you use the sandbox, it works the same way everywhere. Meaning that if your uh, main uh, server is on uh, Red Hat, you can use the sandbox. And then if you have a spare server on a Solaris, it will work the same way. Mac OS X, the same. So this is the, the reason. It's, it's going to be easy and portable. What does the sandbox do? It takes your version and uses the version as a template for new places, uh, for the elements that can be in conflict. So we talked about the data directory. We'll do a sandbox home MSB version and data directory. It will use the version as a port and the version to build a socket. So if you have a 5.126, you will have this element. If you have a 6.06, .06, you will have similar elements, but they are, will not conflict. In addition to the above, once you install the sandbox, you have specialized commands to use them. If you have ever tried to use a side server, you know that to start a side server, you have to indicate the, the socket, the port, and the data directory that you are using. So if you do that manually, it's going to take you very long time to do that properly and you make mistakes. Instead, the sandbox will give you commands to start, to stop, clear, and then use the sandbox itself. So you don't have to remember where was my data directory, what was the port number that I created. Everything is already in place. If you make a multiple sandbox, remember the sandbox can make a, not only one single server, but again, can create groups of servers, for instance, in replication. Then you have a command to start them and stop them all at once. To use a specific uh, elements, for instance, in a replication, you use the master, slave one, slave two, or you can use uh, all them at all. If you want to send a command to all the servers that you created, you do use all. So the easy way to create a, a server is this. Use the command make sandbox after you download it. Make sandbox and the name of the tarball. And that's it. It will take care of everything. If you want uh, a replication system, almost the same command. Instead of make sandbox, you do make replication sandbox. If you want a circular replication, it's a little bit longer. Minus minus circular equals how many nodes you want to, to create, and it will work. If you want a multiple server, not in replication, in the same uh, group, you use make multiple sandbox. And if you want a multiple server of a different version in the same group, then you simply use the appropriate uh, script with a list of versions that you want to create. The list of versions could be also a list of tarball. Uh, 
Are you following me so far? You may have uh, different uh, problems, so you can fine tune the sandbox with options. In addition to say the path, you can say do this and that in a specific way. Uh, for instance, one thing that you can do, you can choose the configuration file, the option file that you want to use for your sandbox. You know that uh, MySQL comes with some templates. We have small, medium, large, and huge. And you can tell the sandbox to use uh, one of these templates. Or if you have uh, your favorite option file, you can just uh, put the full path to that option file, and the sandbox will merge your option file with the uh, options that uh, are needed to create the sandbox. So we will skip the things that are in conflict and use your op option file. There are many things that you can do in a sandbox, and you cannot possibly remember all of them. I don't, even though I create that. So if you want to use uh, several uh, options, you just say minus minus interactive, and the sandbox will ask you, for each option, what do you want to do? It's a crude um, menu, but it works. At every step of the installation, you can say default, meaning from now on, use the default parameters. Or you can say back, because you want to change the previous one or you want just to abort and say quit. Let's see that in practice. Once you have installed a sandbox, you'll say start. And this starts the server. It will create a .pid file in your data directory, so you will know the process ID of the server that is uh, running on that sandbox. It will create a socket in a temporary directory. If the feed file exists, it will uh, not start. Stop is it. It will stop the sandbox. And then we have a send kill command. It works like stop. But if the server is not responsive, it will kill it brutally. This is useful if you are testing an unstable version or you are testing something potentially dangerous that you know that may crash or may uh, hang. So in this case, uh, having a kill, minus kill, is useful. And you don't have to remember all the details, you just do 10 kill and you will take care of the cleanup. Then, since the sandbox is supposed to be used for testing, you have a clear command. Clear will erase everything that is under the sandbox data directory. So you can start from scratch. If you have complex tests that you have made and you want to restart from a clear server, you use this command. Be careful, it doesn't ask for confirmation, it will remove everything. The sandbox is not supposed to be used for production, for testing only. This is why we have a clear command. And of course we have a use command. This will uh, call the MySQL command line client using a default uh, username and password that is msandbox and the root password is msandbox as well. Don't tell anyone that I am one that doesn't care about security. This is a testing environment. This is why the password is on the, in the open. Uh, but if you are if you have any reason to 
to use something different, you just have to to use different username and password during your uh, installation. You can do it. It's just one of the options that uh, are available with the sandbox. And you have uh, one special command that is called dot mine. You know that uh, in different MySQL versions, you have MySQL dump, MySQL bin log, MySQL admin. And you want to be sure that uh, using separate MySQL versions, you are indeed using the right tool from the right version. You don't want to use MySQL dump for, from version 4.1 on a 5.1 server. It won't work. This is why using this abbreviation, you will uh, invoke the right command, the right tool for the sandbox that you are using. So if you say my space SQL dump and then all the options for my SQL dump, you will invoke the my SQL dump for the sandbox that you have installed. When you have a replication, you can uh, do everything at once. So you have start all, stop all, send kill all, clear all, and then use all commands. We're going to see them in practice. Inside uh, every replication sandbox, you can call the master and each slave using this abbreviation. M for the master, S1 for the first slave, S2 for the second slave, and so on. When you have a multi-node sandbox that are not in replication, you have mostly the same commands that you have seen for uh, replication. The access to each node, instead of being N for master and S for slave, is N1, N2, N3, and so on. One more thing. Now, if you liked what I said before, you're going to like this even more. All the sandboxes are created under one sandboxes directory. Why? First of all, because it's easy to, to keep track of them. You're not uh, um, forced to that. You can change this, but it's recommended that you follow the default and let the sandbox build your sandbox under, the, under this directory. The usefulness of this is that uh, if you are testing many things, and you create, let's say, 10 sandboxes, if you put them in different places, you have them then to go and stop them individually, one by one, and remember where they were. If you have all of them under the sandbox directory, you can have, uh, you know, like the Lord of the Ring, one ring, ring to rule them all. This is the sandbox directory. It's one uh, sandbox uh, to rule all the sandboxes. So you can say start all, and it will start all the sandboxes beneath. Stop all those the same, or even more cool, you can send an SQL statement to all the sandboxes inside. So if you have uh, one replication sandbox made of uh, five uh, servers and uh, five uh, more individual sandboxes, the use all will send your statement to 10 different servers and give you the, the result. When you are testing something, it's going to be really wonderful. When you are comparing the <clears throat> the behavior of different versions. So what can you do in a server with uh, sandboxes? You can make a host very crowded. You can have a single sandbox, a replication sandbox, and several independent servers. Depending on your memory, you can also have uh, independent sandboxes of different versions. Or 
you can reach 14 servers, don't do that if you have an EEPC. Or 21, so you can test uh, 5, 0, 5, 1, and 6, 0, all at once with single replication and independence. You can <coughs> just uh, crowd your server, your server very much with sandboxes, and the good thing is that all of them are independent. If you try this, if you have enough uh, uh, memory and this, you don't need much disk to, to create empty sandboxes, but if you have enough memory and CPU power, you will see that all of this will start without complaining, meaning that uh, all of this will uh, have separated ports sockets and data directories, they don't interfere to each other. So you can really test them independently. Questions so far? No, it will use always different ports. Now if you use a single port, it will use 5126. If you use a replication, it will use a prefix before and then start. Now, uh, I don't remember exactly uh, what is the prefix because I set a different prefix for replication for independent groups, for circular replication, and so on. So let's say it will say 7000 plus 5126 plus 1. And this for the master and then we'll do 7,000 plus 536 plus 2 for the first slave and so on. But the proof that they will use a, a separate port, we will have that it will work. So if you set a, a single sandbox and a replication sandbox and they, uh, you don't get any error message, means that uh, they have separate ports. Yes. Uh, the sandbox doesn't support that, uh, and the manual doesn't recommend it. <laughs> but feel free, feel free to submit a patch. <laughs> now, demonstration time. We're going to see some sandbox in uh, practice, and I can show you where the sandbox is. The sandbox is a public project. It's launchpad.net. MySQL dash sandbox. And you can get the, the code, you can download the code. You have the latest versions available as a tarball, or you can download the source code from Bazaar. You can submit bugs, or you can ask for questions. Mm -hmm. Now it says answers here, so eventually if you ask something, I will give you an answer or somebody else will give you an answer. But this is the place where you, you can ask questions about Sandbox. The thing that it will be very much appreciated if you find a bug, just come here and submit a bug telling me what happened and I will be glad to take care of that. Uh, what else is important here? There is the documentation, there is a link to this presentation, and uh, 
the list of developer. Okay, we have the maintainer, that sandbox developer, and this is a group of developers uh, of which I belong. To which I belong, that you can join if you want to contribute to this uh, project. Any questions about this? It's a completely public project, and it's in the open. You can see everything that happens from the code contribution to the documentation to the bug fixing. Now, let's see that in practice. The current version is MySQL Sandbox 209. And you can see here the script that I mentioned. Uh, make Sandbox, make replication Sandbox, make multiple Sandbox. Let's start with uh, one uh, simple sandbox. I give uh, the name of the tarball. I press enter. It's unpacking the tarball. This is the longest process. After that, it will give me the list of the options that I'm using. If I'm satisfied that uh, this is what I want, I will just say yes or press enter and the sandbox is ready. So from, from the moment I press enter, it's, going, it's quite a short time, five seconds, let's see. So I have my sandbox in my home directory, sandboxes, MSB, that stands for MySQL Sandbox 5.1.26. Let's try. We can just say use. And here you are. MySQL 5.1.26. And we are working. Let's do the same thing, but with the replication. Notice that it's not uh, unpacking anything, because uh, since it was unpacked uh, for the previous uh, request, the <clears throat> the tarball is already unpacked. Now it's creating the master slave, then initializing the uh, master and the slave, and it's created in R sandbox, or replication sandbox, 5126. Let's see if it works. Let's call the master, use test, create the table T1, and then we use the first slave. And this is a replication system that is working. If you have uh, ever 
tried to do replication manually, you will appreciate this. If you have a problem related to replication, you have to test something separately without affecting your, your servers, and you need a replication system, this is going to be one of your favorite tools. Uh, let's do the same thing with a different version. Now, uh, instead of uh, saying the name of the tarball, like I did here, you can use uh, simply the version if you have the version in a specific place. The specific place is home opt mysql. Since I am a, a tester and I have to test many things, I have all the versions already expanded under this directory. And you can uh, use the uh, sandbox bin directory environmental ver uh, var uh, variable to change this directory. So if you don't like this, or if you want to use something else, you just uh, say which, is, which directory you want to use. And then if you have the, the tarball expanded and the directory named after the version, you can do something more simpler. You see, you don't have to expand because it's already expanded, and you can create one sandbox in seconds. And the same for replication. Replication sandbox 5067. All of them are not in conflict with the previous ones. Let's have a look. Now, under the sandbox as directory, maybe I have to put it. I have a single sandbox for 5.126, a single sandbox for 5.067, a replication sandbox for 5.126, and one for 5.067. Let's uh, ask use all, select version, and server ID. Uh, yes, this is wonderful when it happens. It tells you that you have a mistake 15 times. When you get it right, so you have version 5067, and the server ID is zero for the single sandbox. When we talk about replication, we have server ID one for the master, 101 for the first slave, 102 for the second slave, and the same for the other version. Um, let's create a circular replication. Who has ever tried the circular replication? Nobody? Ah, okay, good for you. Because circular replication is a pain in the neck, not to mention other parts of the body. Um, it's very difficult to, to implement. And if you have a test that requires uh, circular replication, you're going to suffer a lot. So how does it work? You just say minus minus circular equal 5. Let's say 6. So it's different from the example that we had in the slides. Installing node 1 to 6. And then it's activating them. 
Now we have a circular replication. Let's see if it works. To see if it works, we choose one node. We make something in that node, and then we ask all the other nodes if they see the, the change. So which node can we use? Give me a number from one to six. Five. And five test. So create table cross con ID. Now use all show tables from test and all the nodes will tell you that they have a cross con table. Let's do something different in a different um, node. For instance, we can have an two test. Uh, and we create a table called cross-con2 and then we ask the same question and all of them will say that they see a cross-con2 so it's really a circular working replication and since you haven't seen any errors it means that all of them are not in conflict with the previous ones. Now, let's start the, let's try the Lord of the Ring trick. Stop all. It's uh, stopping all the sandboxes beneath uh, this directory. In the correct order. You see, it takes more longer to stop them than to create them. Now we have no sandboxes, active ones, but we can start them all. This is a replication starting. The circular replication. And that's it. We started them all. Now, are you interested to see how to create a composite sandbox? Let's say that you want to compare the behavior of a 5.0, 5.1, and 6.0. You can do that using this command. make multiple custom sandbox. We can say 5067, 5126, and 606. Now, the only problem that I have with this group directory is that I don't know how to call it. So I try to use the name, the combined name of all the versions. And it can become really a long name for a directory, but this is the only shortcoming that I can see.
Now I have N1, N2, N3, and if you want to compare how different uh, versions do the same thing, you just do uh, use all. Of course, you can say even something that is more meaningful than this, but just to give you an idea, this is working well. Questions? Yes, sir. No, I don't, because uh, the scripts uh, take care of using the 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 shared libraries that are that come with the the firewall. Can you say again? With this, but considering that this is only for testing, uh, I can really say what we have, uh, what the largest is for testing. I've done uh, as many as 50 servers at once. Uh, but I, I don't know exactly how other people use that house how they have pushed uh, it to the limit. Yes? Yes, I've thought about that, even though <clears throat> every solution that I can think of is going to be a little bit intrusive, meaning that if you have to install two different servers, you need to have credential to access those servers. So I, I came up with a solution that uses MySQL proxy that is uh, kind of stealthy. So it does that uh, behind your back without telling you anything. That, but this is dangerous. I mean, it can be really <coughs> uh, assisted to, to allow uh, unauthorized access to a different server. Instead, if you use a agent, meaning that uh, you install a s small application in every server, this is the, maybe the favorite way. I'm collecting feedback, and uh, I will do it eventually, once I'm sure that I'm doing what uh, most of the people want. I have a blueprint in the um, in the <coughs> in the website of MySQL Sandbox about this specific uh, task. So if you have uh, um, preferences, you can comment on that blueprint, and I will t will uh, consider it. It should work on SIGWIN. I haven't tried it. If you try it and it works, let me know. If it doesn't work, let me know and with the error message, and I will try to figure out why. Thank you.